Welcome back to another Foxy Games UK video and what a damn fine day for hot off the press gaming news it is. Where to begin? Well, we should start with February's God of War Ragnarok 2 digital PS5 codes giveaway which ends next week, next week Friday. I'll be randomly drawing two people just as soon as I find a pencil. Ha! Cringy joke there. Now to enter February's 2023 giveaway, simply like, subscribe, hit the notification tab, and yes, comment on videos. Easy street, just like Paperboy. Okay, so in today's Foxy Games UK news stories, unbelievably, Sony's archaic but still very much appreciated 7th generation console. And we are talking the 9th generation with PS5, but remarkably, Sony has elected to deploy a PS3 system firmware update. PlayStation Lifestyle reported. So the PS3 firmware update 4.90 is now available to download for anyone still using the PlayStation 3, I still do. A new system software update will surely come as a surprise, but the previous patch rolled out in May of last year. So seeing the February 28 update popping up is no doubt going to be a bit of a shock. Thankfully, it's only a small download and shouldn't cause too much downtime before getting back to those retro Sony games. We all would love to play on PS5s, at least natively. Good thing I have two in excellent condition. Two PS3 Slims. So the PS3 update 4.90 patch notes detail just one change, which reads, this system software update improves system performance, something many a Nintendo Switch user will be familiar with. Unfortunately, that's the only benefit and very little detail has been provided by Sony, but the update package weighs in at a lofty SSD draining 200 megabytes, yes. 200 megabytes you're definitely going to have to upgrade that hard drive just saying now moving uh, back to the present generation console hardware this time courtesy of video games chronicle vgc.com so microsoft has sold 18.5 million xbox series x and series s consoles i do not know which of the two has the highest number i imagine series s has sold uh, the majority of them. If I was to fathom my guess, I don't even think Microsoft have shifted five, six million Xbox Series X consoles. That just just a figure I'm guessing. But Series S is obviously their main seller because of the price. Now, an analyst firm has estimated that the 18.5 million of these consoles is actually where Microsoft are to date, even though Microsoft does not share figures. Xbox doesn't tend to release console sell figures unless significant milestones are reached, meaning there are now official figures for how Xbox Series X and Series S systems have performed remarkably. However, in a newly published review of the console market in 2022, Ampere Analysts, that's the analysis of peers Harding Rolls estimated that 18.5 million consoles had sold by the end of last year. Now, Harding Rolls notes that while the sales of both PS5 and Xbox Series X were held back due to the ongoing shortages, something well documented, Xbox managed to slightly increase its share of its unit sales over the past year due to more widely available Xbox Series X. And it was widely available. In fact, I don't think it was ever out of stock. However, he does note that the level of demand for Series S during the holiday season, even with pricing promotions, that's the, in the UK, I believe they were for about two weeks, it was on sale on Amazon for like £189, literally a giveaway, if you've got £189, that is. Now, this suggests that it does not have the high end pull of its bigger brother because the sales weren't great over the holiday season. Now, last month, Sony announced that it it has now become much easier to find a PlayStation 5, but I think they're talking about the disc model because there's still a shortage of digital units I can see, claiming that its hardware shortage was coming to an end while Microsoft has yet to make a similar claim for Series X, though Series X has been bundled with a game and the price has been increased. So that might uh, explain a few things. Now, as such, Harding Rolls predicts that the sales gap between PS5 and Xbox Series X and S will increase in the first half of 2023, at least until Xbox Series X shortages. Availability of PlayStation 5 improved towards the end of the year, especially in the US, and the global stock has been much more regularly available in 2023, according to Ampere 
they expect the gap between PlayStation and Xbox unit sales to widen in the first half of 2023 and Xbox will become a more consistently selling available console in the second half of the year. Elsewhere in the analysis, Harding Rolls claims that Microsoft's share of the gaming market that's combining sales of hardware, game content and subscriptions grew from 25.5% back in 2021 to 27.3% in 2022 and believe it or not, Nintendo is like 27%, 27.7% of that share. So Microsoft and Nintendo are pretty even Stevens in the US, while Sony's drop from 46.3% to 45%. Harding Rolls attributes this to the fact that spending on Xbox consoles, hardware, and console based Game Pass services grew compared to 2021, and Microsoft extended its market share lead in the console subscription segment and delivered an all-time high for Xbox Game Pass subscribers in the final three months of that year. Microsoft President Brad Smith claimed during a press conference last week that Sony's PlayStation had a 70% share of global console market versus Xbox's 30%. Following a European Commission hearing at which Microsoft presented arguments for why its proposed acquisition of Activision Blizzard should be approved. Smith also claimed that PlayStation outsold Xbox by 69 to 31 towards the end of 2022. Wow. And that's where the article ends. You know, I don't claim to be a journalist. I don't claim to be an analyst. But maybe PlayStation sells way better than Xbox is because of the games right i mean when i think of the extraordinary slate of ps5 games announced and yet to be announced titles coming to the platform in 2023 and beyond metal gear solid silent hill castlevania final fantasy 16 final fantasy 7 part 2 spider-man 2 wolverine the wolverine ghost of tsushima 2 a new persona game a to be announced sci-fi epic rpg a to be announced Uncharted game, a to be announced Marvel game, a to be announced first person shooter, a to be announced action arcade style racer, and then some. Granted, some of those listed games are rumours yet to be confirmed, but we'll wait and see. It's not my job to convince people to buy a PS5. The game lineup can speak for itself, and Sony don't pay me. However, it should be noted this list is not a leak per se, nothing to do with any, you know, insiders. Nobody's snitching here, just some of the stuff that's in the PlayStation pipeline, certainly in terms of the third party timed deals and the full on bona fide PS5 exclusives. Stuff that's in the PlayStation pipeline, certainly in terms of third party timed deals and full bona fide PS5 exclusives. Yes, save it for another video. There are at least 10 more games I can't even hint, let alone mention. Though I think we can all agree it's certainly been a slow start, but this generation is going to be absolutely ridiculous. Now, see, I watched the recent head of Xbox and Microsoft Gaming, Phil Spencer's Xbox On interview yesterday. And while it was interesting, I couldn't help but think if the deal dies, why not take that 70 billion US dollars and buy up a bunch of one to two year timed exclusives? Play Sony at its own game. Quit complaining. Dump big third party games into Game Pass after three to six months. Continue to drop your first party titles day one, but give those third parties a respect. They, are, you know, they deserve because those games are selling at $70 on a PS5 and a Switch somewhere. Now, if you can't beat them, copy them. $70 billion is a ton of money. Think of the other things that can be done with the Xbox brand. And Xbox and PlayStation will always have Call of Duty regardless. It's firmly entrenched in multi-platform territory. Always has, always will be. I don't know, people. I just don't know. But it's just a thought. And also hear a bunch of waste men complaining about parity as to why multi-platform games often run worse than on a PS5. Now, if it was parity, surely the games would run exactly the same. Isn't that what parity is? Don't care what a waste man said. I think it's less to do with 
parity more to do with the fact that the ps5 sells and its install base far exceed xbox meaning lead platform for majority third-party ip is yet again playstation unfortunately the xbox series x and s full rdna 2 suite of features will rarely ever be used unless third party specifically target xbox we all know with rising development costs delays games being rushed to release budgets getting out of control meeting deadlines i doubt multi-platform publishers or the developers will focus too heavily in optimizing series x and s as they do with ps5 which is identical hardware minus a disk drive as a PS5 user who also has a Switch and an Xbox, I'm not so concerned as it will come down to Microsoft's 23 Xbox Game Studios, XGS. It will come down to them to do it, to deliver the goods. And if you look at the quality of Xbox's own first party games like Gears 5, Forza Horizon 5, Hi-Fi Rush, Halo Infinite, at least the campaign. So we know quality can come out of those studios, which gives me a little confidence into, you know, gamers actually seeing the hardware fully utilized at some point this gen. Then and only then will we see the odd game push ahead of what PS5 can do. A few extra T-flops can go a long way, they say. But now it's time for Xbox to prove it. It is indeed the most powerful console on the planet because judging by Series S holiday numbers, people want power. Not a pro-like Series S half-step into the next generation. But Microsoft has said it doesn't care about hardware sales as much these days, right? So I doubt it cares as much about the disparity of the 18.5 plus million Xbox Series X and S sales versus PS5's 30 million as it did as much really during the Xbox 360 uh, and the first, say, half of the Xbox One generation. Now, for better or worse, the Xbox model has changed. So if we are in fact talking about numbers and install, things third party game publishers and investors pay attention to, I honestly expect the gap to widen once PS5 stock availability improved, but by almost 12 million units after just two years and change, now that's really something. And you know, I am aware there is a contingent of people who relish in trashing the Xbox brand. I know there are people who would rather I hated on Xbox consoles, slander Xbox games and services at every turn rather than express my anecdotal praise or disappointment as any gamer worth their salt should. Well, I'm not sorry when I say my gaming DNA won't allow it. I may not always agree with the direction the leadership is taking the platform, but I've always enjoyed and continue to enjoy many years of Xbox. It's firmly ingrained in gaming history and much like PlayStation and Nintendo, I hope it sticks around another 20 plus years. Though what say you? Let's continue the discussion cordially in the comments as that brings us to the end of the video. Now, do you remember there's the giveaway to God of War Ragnarok digital copies up for grabs for PS5? Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment regularly on videos. The draw is totally random. Anyone can get it. Good luck out there. And you can help Foxy Games UK reach more gamers, so feel free to share the video. And we also wish to consider supporting Foxy Games via Patreon because, well, we're like family now. Link in the description. That concludes our time together today. Until next time, play games, not corporations. <laughs>